It's day 58 and we're going to learn to use the debugger in Replit because at this point our code's getting quite complicated and it would be good to have a way of finding out what's going on with our program apart from printing all over the shop. So you've probably found some of the challenges recently quite challenging and that's honestly where we should be. If you're finding them too easy, then you're not learning as much. So hopefully they are stretching you a little bit. But at this point, you do need a helping hand. And shockingly, programmers have developed tools to make this process easier. Let's write a simple program and use the debugger to watch it work. So I've got a real simple program here that's going to print out the values 0 to 4 in a for loop. Let's bring up our debugger. Our debugger allows us to step through the program and see what's happened. We're going to start by setting a breakpoint, and I'm going to set that on the print I line. And the way I do that is find the little space or the gutter next to the number and click. Now you'll notice that straight away a little blue dot has appeared next to that line. That means I've told the computer that when you get to that line, I want you to pause for a second and show me what's going on. And you'll see that one of my breakpoints is here. You can put as many breakpoints in your code as you want, but we've only really got two lines here, so I'm not going to go crazy. Then you click Run. The program executes and pauses at the breakpoint, showing us a bunch of information about the code. For instance, we can see that we have a variable i, which is an integer, and it's been set to zero. OK. And then we have a number of things that we can do. We can go to the next step, which is literally the next line of code. We can skip a step or we can move to the next breakpoint. I'm going to go through next step just to see what happens. You'll see there that it printed out zero. And you'll see that the cursor is telling me which line we're on. So now I has become one. It's printed it out. It's gone back up to the for loop. I has become two. And again, what we're seeing is the variables change and all the data. If I go to next breakpoint, it's going to skip to the next print I and show me what's happening there. And if I go to skip step, it's going to skip over and jump to the next line. And there you go. You can slow down the execution of the program with the debugger so you can see what's going on and you can place breakpoints on lines that you want to give special attention to. So here's a slightly longer program that's going to choose a random color and print it out. Let's see how breakpoints can help us look at how that program's working and see if we can work out what's going on. Well, the first part is where are we going to put our breakpoint? It would seem silly to put it on line one and two because they seem very straightforward. What I'm actually going to do is pause it on the first if there and see what happens at that point. I'm going to click run and you'll see the program pauses for entry of data. So I'm going to say I want a random color. And notice now it hasn't given me a random color yet because it's paused at our breakpoint. So it's showing us our variables. We've got our colors list, red, orange, that's this one here. We've got our menu string, which is the number one. So at this point now we can step through it, remember, or jump to the next breakpoint. I'm going to step through it to see what happens. So it's going to ask if the menu is one, which it is. So it's going to move on to the next line, print a random choice. So it's printed out teal and it's moved back up to the menu option at the top. And when we run that line, it's waiting for another prompt. If I were to give it the number and then I were to tell it to go to the next breakpoint, we get our number and it would pop right back to the pause there. Now you can see from this that using progression to the next step allows us to see what's happening with the variables, including lists, and see what's changing within it. And when we're trying to debug big programs, we get a lot of power from this. I'd like you to go back, find one of your big programs Put a few breakpoints in and run it and see what's happening. I'll wait, don't worry. Common problems? Well, the main problem is not using the debugger properly. The key thing that we have to do is make sure that we are putting breakpoints on before we click the debugger play button. And that's important because the debugger play button will run the program up to the first breakpoint. Whereas the main play button, the big green one at the top, will just run the program but like normal. It's also worth remembering the difference between going to the next step and going to the next breakpoint. 
The next breakpoint is brilliant if you want lots of the program to run and just see what's happening to the variables. But if you're not really sure what's happening and why things are going weird, the next step button allows you to step a line at a time through the program, watch it execute and watch what changes and try and catch the problems with the errors. Nothing to fix today because your challenge is to take a bunch of my broken code and use the debugger to fix it. Now, this broken code has some really tricky problems with it that aren't initially apparent. What you need to do is copy that code in, run it, see what it's supposed to do, put a few breakpoints in and see if you can work out what's going wrong. Once you're done, share it with us in the community or use the hashtag replit 100 days of code to share it on social media. Tomorrow is a project where we're aiming to use a bit of recursion and the debugger to make some magic happen. Thank you.